Welcome back, Odoers. My name is Jose Ignacio, and it's an exciting day here at Stealthy Wood. We're investing in our company, and I'm talking big time, because we've decided to lease some brand new trucks, some big ones. So we're going to keep our smaller box trucks for the smaller local jobs, but these bigger trucks, well, we can deliver a whole office's worth of furniture at once with them. So we're adding the new vehicle details into Odoo because we keep track of our fleet because of the tax man. And we want to be able to look up vehicle information when needed. And we also want to keep track of repairs, mileage, and who's driving what. So follow me, tag along as I add these new vehicles to our fleet. Here I am on the main fleet app dashboard. Before I add my new vehicle, let me check and see if the manufacturer is pre-configured by going to configuration and manufacturers. Perfect. So O-doers who are car enthusiasts know that the manufacturer is the make of the car. The default filter only shows me all of the manufacturers with models that I currently use inside of my fleet, but I want to see all of them. So I'm actually going to clear this out. Okay. Well, there's a lot. So these are all listed alphabetically and I can see if I head over to, in our case, I need to go over to the P's. Well, would you look at that? Actually, I see that Peterbilt is not here. So I think we need to add it. We're going to select new up at the top. Okay, now I said the name is Peterbilt. There we go. Then I'm going to add the image, which happens to be the logo. And then we go for that. Okay, perfect. Right there. That's it. So now when I select the manufacturer's breadcrumb and it auto saved, we scroll down and look at that right there. I can see the new company right there. Now let's check out our models by selecting up at the top configuration and this time models. I already know the model won't be listed since I just added the new manufacturer. So I'm going to add the new vehicle model by selecting new. And here we have our new form. So I'm going to enter the name over here, 535 truck. And for this manufacturer field, I'm going to select, as I just said, since we added it, Peterbilt. Great. For the vehicle type, I'm going to select car, even though it's a truck, because these fields are not able to be edited in my case. So we're going to leave that as that because the other option is bike. It's not a bike. Okay, scrolling below, we have a category field. This is where I can specify what kind of car it is. In my case, it's a truck. So next, we're basically going to fill the model section of the information tab that we're on right now. So there are two seats and two doors. So two seats, two doors. Okay, I can filter if I wanted to my case or group vehicles by the number of doors or seats. So this can be helpful when searching for an appropriately sized vehicle. So make sure you fill those two out. And the model year is 2025. And there is, in my case, there's no trailer hitch. So we're going to leave that unticked. Okay, on to the engine over here. The fuel type is good old diesel. It's actually a list that has both gasoline, full hybrid, plug-in, I'm just going through these just so you can see all of the options in case they're not visible over there. But we're going to stick with diesel. Okay, and the range for a full tank is around, well, it's in kilometers. So we got to do our quick little math right there, 1,500. The CO2 emissions are, in my case, 105. We're just filling this out together right now, doers. I want to make sure everything is accurate. The CO2 standard is what system is used for the emissions calculation. So I'm going to enter WLTP which happens to stand for Worldwide Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure. It's high science. Don't worry yourself about it. I know I didn't. Okay, so the transmission, manual. The other option is automatic, but we happen to be manual people. And the power unit is, well, this happens to be horsepower. So we're going to change that one from kilowatt over to horsepower. All right, so the highest horsepower for it is 325. That's a lot of ponies. And then we have a horsepower taxation. I'm going to leave that blank and ask the accounting department if there are any taxes I need to enter here. I don't want to mess it up. Next, we're going to hop over to our vendors tab that we have right there. And we're going to select add. Okay, we got to add our vendor right there. We have to add the shop where we purchase or lease these trucks from. I already have the company configured in our database because we already leased the trucks. So I'm going to select, in my case, we're going to start typing Peterbilt. Peterbilt Anytown, we're going to select them. Perfect. Okay, now to add the truck, I'm going to click on the vehicle smart button up at the top. Everything auto saved right there. And would you look at that? The model is already pre-populated and the manufacturer as well. And that makes it a little bit easier for us to kind of move on through. Okay, 
So I'm going to enter, well, we're here with the license plate first. It happens to be ABC-5555. Dash five 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 five. It's fake, YouTube. Leave me alone. Okay, so for tags, we're going to select delivery because that's the tag that we want to go with. All right, now onto the driver section. I'm going to sign the driver as the best driver that we have, Dan Driver. And I'm going to, actually, he happens to be our best driver. Specifically, this is going to be the first truck that he's going to get. I don't have any plans right now to change the driver, so I'm going to leave this future driver area blank, and that's what I was talking about that. We're also not going to do this little tick box next to a plan to change car. Okay, so Dan's being given the keys Monday, so the assignment date field that we have right here is going to be the following Monday. Pretty soon, actually. Now onto the vehicle section that we have over here. The category is, in my case, it's a truck. Okay, and both, in my case, the order date and the registration date, I need to select a day's date because this happens to be the same date for them as well. I bought it and I registered it today. So I'm not surrendering the plates. I just bought it, so nothing goes into our cancellation date either. Then we have a chassis number. That's what we call a VIN number inside of the United States if you happen to be watching from that area. We're going to type in a fake VIN just so that nothing happens. Again, this is a fake number. So it is also brand new, but even new trucks have a few miles on them to get, you know, all the way to the dealer, maybe test drives. The last time we saw this, it was 28 kilometers right there. And we're going to set that actually to miles because we have a VIN up there. <laughs> all right, so for the fleet manager field, I'm going to select our logistics manager, who happens to be James Jones. Finally, the location is where I specify where the truck is located at. And in my case, it is the main parking lot you just type that in right there okay so next we are over here in our tax info tab thankfully there isn't any horsepower taxation or disallowed expense rate so i'm going to leave this side blank i can always change that if the accounts tell me i need to okay then there is this contract section the first contract date is automatically populated with the day's date which is convenient for us since the lease started today so the catalog value can be thought of as the sticker price or MSRP. It's a very nice truck, beats a cyber truck. So we're looking at 145,000. All right, the purchase value for that reason and this field is the actual price or cost of the truck when we sign the lease. In our case, 138,000. All right, residual value is the current value of the vehicle. And as we know, right now at this moment, you drove it off the lot. And when you drive a car off the lot, it loses a lot of value. So I'm going to enter 135. We lost 3,000. I'm going to update this in the future because it's going to change. All right, now we're going to hop on over to the model tab that we have right there. Conveniently, this is almost completely pre-populated with the things that I might need. But we might want to also do our own information in here. So the model year for that reason is 2025. Transmission is automatic, as I just said, for our 535 truck. Okay, we have some stuff that we need to enter. In my case, the color. I am going to suggest that it is called Stealthy Wood White, but for layman out there, it is white. Okay, the truck is now configured. I just need to scroll back up to the top up here. And now to change the status of the truck to registered, we're going to select registered. Perfect. Okay, now that the vehicle is added, we can't forget to add the contract for the new lease. I'm going to click our contracts smart button up at the top, and I'm going to select new for the new contract. Okay, as you can see, some fields are pre-populated based on the vehicle's configuration, like the contract start and the end dates as well. We also happen to have our, well, there we have our driver information and everything else that we might need. Okay, I can add, if I wanted to, a reference in this field. So in my case... I'm going to put Dan Drivers Peter Built Lease. I'm going to type in truck. So first, I'm going to select the type of contract this is. It happens to be leasing. There is internal links if you need to edit or change this or create your own as well. But did you also see that? The description up above changed. That says leasing P Peter Built 535 truck and ABC-555. I like when stuff like that happens. So for vendor field, once again, we're going to select Peterbilt of any town right there. That happens to be our local dealership. This way, when I go to buy or lease another Peterbilt, I have their information saved when requesting a quote. I do have an area for some included services, 
So I'm going to select them here. I happen to get three oil changes as well in rotation. So I'm actually going to remember that. So oil change and tire rotations. That's nice. This is great to know since I don't want to pay for service if it's free. So make sure you put them there. Okay, now we have our cost section down below. Our accounts would get very mad if I left this part out. So we have an activation cost right there is the fee paid to initially lease the truck. In this case, $3,500. The recurring cost is the monthly leasing fee, which I'm going to enter at $800. And that you can also select whether it happens daily, weekly, yearly, or no, if it was not a recurring cost at all. But we're going to go back to our monthly right there. Lastly, we have the date field. And this is when the contract starts, which happens to be today's date. So we're going to select that right there as well. Now, manually save up at the top. And look at that. We're in the running stage. Now, when I click our vehicle breadcrumb over here, you can see that the contract smart button is updated. And it reflects the new contract. And that's it for my tutorial today, oh doers. Today, we walked through how to add a new vehicle, including adding the manufacturer and the model and all the details. We also learned how to create a vehicle contract for our leased vehicles. Stay tuned for the next tutorial where we keep talking trucks. Till then, keep your eyes on the road.